Welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in to In the Know with the Bullioness. I'm Dawn Marie, the Bullioness, a Silver Level Associate and Top Recruiter at 7K Metals. Please join me in welcoming return and very special guest to the show, AG Leveraged, a self-described voracious fan of gold and silver with a comprehensive understanding of geopolitics. Today, we're going to be discussing why silver. Welcome to the show, AG. Hi, Don. How are you today? I'm doing awesome. So glad that you could make it on this fabulous Friday. So yes. let's get straight to it. Why silver? So silver is money. Let's start with that. So the word dollar in its original definition. Uh, let's go back to the Coinage Act of 1792. It's defined dollar as 371 grains and 4 seventeenths weights of pure silver is a dollar. So in that form, that dollar was in fact money. It said silver certificate, and we know, we know what it represented in so far as the weight of silver. So <clears throat> from 1792, from that same coinage act until 1834, silver was that, that 371 grains and 4 seventeenths. That's a troy pound plus a penny. At the time, the ratio of gold to silver was 15 ounces of silver to every one ounce of gold. What you and I use today that we are told is money, on the very top, it does not say silver certificate, and it is not backed by silver. In fact, it admits, it says Federal Reserve Note. That is not a dollar, not by the definition of the Coinage Act of 1792. That is, in fact, an IOU. So we transact today using the IOUs. So going back to why silver. Silver in Spanish and in the majority of Spanish countries, the word money is, is called silver. It's, it's said plata, P-L-A-T-A. And that is how you define money. And that happens to be the way in the majority of the world to this very day. When a person says a dollar, they're talking about silver. When they say money, they're talking about silver. And even here in America, the word dollar is a misnomer because it actually means the weight in silver. So wow. That's great. I never even knew that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's something they, they again, they don't, they keep all this knowledge from us so that we continue to transact in what they print up that costs them less than three cents for every paper note that's printed. Whether that paper note says 20 on it, $20, whether it says $1, $5, $10, it's the same cost to them, same amount of ink, same quality of paper. And yet we, we give it value because we trust in it, right? So if I may, Don, go into some of the reasons why silver, because that was your original question. Oh, please do. Please do. So silver is in, in the majority of technology that we use every single day. It's in our tech devices. It's on our cell phones. It's in the ability to transmit video back and forth. It's in, uh, it's in our, all, all our smart devices. In fact, our large screens, our very, very large, large screen televisions that, that encompass a wall, they use over two ounces of silver each. Uh, the, the electric vehicles, at least the high-end vehicles, use two to three ounces of silver each. Right now, we're moving away from oil as a, as a country and as a world, and we're going more towards uh, electrical that the need for silver is going to grow, and in that need for silver as an industrial metal, so too by definition must the, the, the price of the actual uh, silver when denominated in this case in, in the dollar. But beyond that, uh, so I'm a builder by trade, as I've mentioned before. In the year 2020 in California, every new home must have solar panels on the rooftop. The solar panels, depending on the manufacturer, will house anywhere between a quarter ounce to, to several ounces, depending on how many solar panels are used. So 
because it's now going to become a, a mandated legal requirement for solar panels, that too is going to pull in the the move towards uh, silver electric vehicles and away from oil, the move towards solar panels for efficiency in our residential homes, uh, the move towards tech in our in our devices, because the more tech we get, the more technical savvy, technical, um, the more the requirements on technology, because we're becoming a highly technological society, the more our need for silver as an industrial metal. And that, of course, will cause the price of silver to rise. All of these things will. Beyond that, the amount of yearly silver that is mined is completely consumed on a yearly basis. There is nothing left over. Were it not for the huge reserves that, that countries have, we would have already been in a decline of, of silver up until now. Um, so at this moment in time, both above-ground silver and above-ground gold equate approximately $6 billion each. Now, if you do the math on, on each one, one is worth 18 to $19 an ounce. The other one is worth approximately $1,500 an ounce. This is in, in 2019. So the, 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 the marketplace for gold is just so much bigger than, than silver. Silver can only grow from its current availability above ground per ounce price. It has no choice. Wait, wait, let me make sure I get you right. So are you saying in the future that silver may be more valuable than gold? I, in this case, gold has been used for thousands of years as money in exchange between the kings, the royals, countries. Uh, it, it's been used by banks. It's been used by everything, by everyone. And silver, remember, was it was a money for the longest time. Even if it was used for its reflective properties way back in the day or for jewelry and so forth, it didn't have the, the demand that it has now for technology. So now you have the industrial marketplace competing directly with silver as a money, as a form of money. And because so much of it has been mined and we've been in a supply deficit for over 50 years, by definition, silver must climb. Um, if I may just be more specific, since approximately the 19, uh, 1950, governments held $10 billion worth of silver. And right now, how much silver do governments hold? Very, very, very little. I don't have the exact amount, but it's, it's less than a 100 portion of that $10 billion marker than it was back in the 1950s because that's the silver that's been used to supply the deficit in silver that gets mined on a yearly basis. If the countries and governments didn't bring this out into the general marketplace, silver would have a significantly higher price because everything that's mined gets used up by industry and by collection and so forth. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So with that being said, what appears to be our silver's future? Silver has, it can only rise. And, and uh, again, the, the manipulation of silver to keep it down has been in order to keep and prop the popularity of the dollar up. The only reason we still have faith in the dollar is because we can, in fact, today go out and get a cheeseburger for a dollar and go out and get a bicycle or a car ride or whatever we need to do. In, in that dollar form via credit card, via bank statement, via whatever. But right now we do exchange it for goods and services and everything else that we need. So it is a currency. But is it a money? No. We've talked about what a definition of money is, and it definitely isn't money. Um, it, it, it's this great awakening that's taking place because some of this information that you and I talk about, Don, is coming out to the general public. People are waking up to the truth about the paper that they're transacting in, as well as the real, not only the, the genuine uses and needs of, of silver as an industrial metal into our daily lives, but also into it being an actual form of money because it has inherent value. Every single coin that you hold 
in your hand that is a silver coin, a one-ounce coin, it took time, enormous time and enormous effort to get that out of the ground. Many hundreds, if not thousands of pounds of earth and rock had to be picked up in order to pick up trace amounts of silver. And then it had to be shipped to get refined. It had to be separated from all the other metals. Then it had to be shipped elsewhere to be minted into an actual coin. Then it had to be shipped elsewhere so that it ultimately got to you. And if you think about it, that one ounce for eighteen, nineteen dollars after all that process takes place, you're holding in your hand that one ounce that is worth significantly more, and one day that will come to pass. That one ounce will be worth more than it's worth today. And I'm not promising riches. I'm not promising enormous wealth. I'm just saying that the silver will be worth what it should be worth, and I'm saying that it makes a sound strategy insofar as savings and preservation of wealth and insurance against everyone finding out what the dollar is really worth. Exactly. At least it's going to outpace uh, the fiat currency. So right there, it's valuable. Yes. Well, excellent. Well, thank you for that insightfulness. And let's go ahead and finish up our show with a wonderful tip of the day to take us over for the weekend. The tip of the day is, the question is, why silver? So it asks in that same question, why not gold? It doesn't mean why not gold. I I think buying gold is a phenomenal idea. But remember, gold can be counterfeited in a way that silver, uh, it can be counterfeited as well, but gold, because it it got such a a higher price denomination per ounce, that the counterfeiting of it, especially when it comes to 100-ounce bars and so forth, gold, they're using tungsten in there as, a, as, as one of the fake metals used inside of gold so that it, it passes as real gold. Um, mm. the, the difference in, uh, in ratio between the gold and silver, as we mentioned earlier, was 15 to 1 in the late 1700s, uh, mid, mid-1800s, mid and now it's at 80, 83, 84 to 1. So that ratio will return back to its, its, its normal pace. And when it does, he or she who has that silver stored away is going to do just fine. So my tip of the day is stack, 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 put your weight on, mm-hmm. and, um, and be certain that uh, you're doing the right thing for yourself and for your family and, uh, and relish in, in such a thing. And where did that word stack come from? Is it just stacking up coin on top of coin? It, it, it is exactly that. There's, there's a... There's a a crowd out there, a very small crowd, uh, again, less than 1% of 1%, they call themselves stackers. And they call themselves stackers because they stack metal. They continue stacking. And usually it's in the form of bullion. Uh, but, it, but again, a stacker ultimately does evolve into a collector because when that person begins to notice the, the beauty in a round or the beauty in a currency that, from a sovereign country, a currency from a sovereign country, meaning uh, an American eagle or a Canadian maple leaf, some coin that was minted by a country, by a free country. Uh, when you look at it up close, it's, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. And, and you start doing some research into how many are minted, what's the history of, of the leader on the other side, or, or what's the story behind what was minted on, on, on the reverse versus the obverse. Um, yes, stacking means stacking metals on a, on, on a per weight basis. And I know normally at the end of the day, uh, or at the end of the segment, we say the tip of the day, but I just thought of another question I wanted to offer. Because when we say 10 to 20% of your portfolio, that kind of sounds, um, you know, for people that have a lot of money. And so the average person that's making 25000 a year, gross, they pay taxes, so 10 to 20% on 25,000 gross is going to be uh, 2,500 to 5,000 a year. But based on net, that's going to be much smaller. So I just wanted to just verify with you, what do you think for the average person to that's making 25,000 a year, what would you recommend that they try to budget to put away? That's an excellent question. Um, the person making 25000 a year after taxes, they're going to bring home 20000 a year. So they're going to say, I, I don't have enough money to, to store anything away. That isn't true because we go to Starbucks, we go to Jack in the Box, 
we, we, go, we, go, we buy candy, we buy a soda pop, whatever we buy. We do have money. And it's, it's $18 per ounce. But it doesn't have to be a whole ounce. A person can buy a fourth of an ounce or a tenth of an ounce. And so, you know, you could spend a dollar, dollar and a half, two dollars a week or every two weeks or once a month and ultimately be able to get to, uh, to a point where the person is comfortable. Going back to the $25,000 a year uh, person, ideally they're going to have $2,500 worth of metals in their own possession at some point. If that seems too much, entirely too much, and let's pretend that's a five-year goal. It doesn't have to be a one-year goal. But let's pretend that seems like entirely too much. The bigger question is what are their expenditures on a monthly basis? I believe that every person should have at least three to six months of what they need in personal reserves. That way, it doesn't have to be a financial collapse. It doesn't have to be a financial reset. It could be an earthquake. It could be war. It could be disease. It could be some kind of, of incident that we couldn't imagine, God forbid, occur. And we are we're safe and sound with a few months of reserve. So it should be occur. Now that's some exciting news that everyone can do. On any budget, just start doing it on your own pace, one even at a time, a little bit of one tenth ounce, which is the size of a dime. You can get 10 of those for about $20 from 7K Metals. So thank you so much for those words of wisdom, AG. That is great information that I think everyone can implement starting today. In closing, much gratitude to our show sponsor, SilverPreparedness.com. Do subscribe to our channel. Click the link in the description below the video to visit our website today. Join our dynamic team led by AG Leveraged, myself, and together, let's soar. Thank you again, AG, for your time and dedication to getting this message out because we know so many are going to be affected by it in a very good way. So until, until our next segment, have a fabulous weekend, everyone. Bye for now.